It's been an interesting week for Irish boxing. Uh, day after day after day, there have been headlines in the newspapers, basically on the back of what Bob Arum, the world-famous promoter who has been in the game for the best part of six decades at this point, has promoted some of the biggest fights in history and uh, has been involved with some of the biggest fighters in history. He was um, giving credit to Daniel Kinahan for his involvement in various big fights that have happened around the world recently. And as a result of this, uh, there's been follow-up stories in the newspapers all week. The front page headline on the star this morning, mobster Kinahan shakes up his career, and that's uh, S-H-E-I-K-H-S. Um, and they're saying that uh, Daniel Kinahan has been made a special advisor at an MMA sports company owned by Bahraini royalty. It is indeed the son of the king of Bahrain who owns the company that has just issued a press release welcoming uh, Daniel Kinahan to the company as somebody who uh, is a global, a global power broker in the sport of boxing and MMA. And there are uh, comments from Daniel Kinahan in the press release suggesting that he's looking forward to turning Bahrain into a global centre for um, MMA combat sports generally. And the front page of the Irish Sun, Kinahan blessed Conlon fight is the headline from an interview that uh, that newspaper today has done with Bob Arum themselves, where it says that um, uh, Daniel Kinnan would have helped with making sure that everybody was cooperating with the uh, Michael Conlon fight, and uh, also suggests that um, he's been involved as an advisor to top rank promotions, Daniel Kinnan that is. So uh, where did all this come from and what has the response been? And what's the genesis of this whole story? Well, another development has happened in the last uh, 24 hours or so. Sandra Vaughan is the CEO of MTK Global. You might remember MTK Global. They're one of the biggest promotional companies in boxing, and they've essentially come from nowhere over the last number of years. Um, they were founded as MGM, which was the first name of the company. Um, Matthew Macklin was involved in that, and that company sold uh, to Sandra Vaughan. It renamed before they sold, and then they sold to Sandra Vaughan, who is uh, the CEO of it, and now the whole owner of it, she says. And um, she was obviously quite upset with the comments that were published in Irish media in particular over the last number of days, linking Daniel Kinahan back to MTK, despite the fact that MTK had been a pains to point out that that relationship was no longer a formal relationship the way it was when he formed the company with Matthew Macklin back uh, when they set it up. So she went on um, uh, and did an interview on, on the YouTube channel IFL TV last night where she gave about uh, half an hour of her time to the interviewer and she talked about Daniel Kinahan, about Bob's Arms comments, uh, Bob Arms comments and about the future of MTK. And I just wanted to let her speak for herself in this. So there's about three minutes here. The voice you're gonna hear, the, the Scottish accent is that of Sandra Vaughan. She is the chief executive of MTK Global. Have a listen. The reason that we got Tyson Fury is because he was recommended to us through Daniel, which I'm totally grateful for. So, and that happens all the time. And I hope it continues to happen. And as long as we fulfill what Daniel says that we are, that we're a great management company, and we keep doing the best for the fighters, the fighters as much as we can, hopefully we'll get recommendations and continue to get recommendations from Daniel. Daniel, obviously, is an advisor to Bob, uh, to Bob Arum, right? That's obviously an official capacity that he's got with them. The reason that we managed to get dates for ESPN is because Daniel gave me the introduction to Top Rank. Recommendation coming from Daniel with someone like Boxing Royalty like Bob Arum and giving us that opportunity, that's a, 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 an amazing, you know, a, a amazing platform for us. It's, you know, but, and again, that's came through a recommendation from Daniel. No connection, never got paid for it. Do, do you know, Something again, it's a learning curve for me because I'm like horrified, you know, like some of the things that you say. Can I be perfectly honest with you? Please. It's, it's, it's a standing joke, man. it's like we are the butt of the Irish jokes. Like, you know, that that's they'll say this is why people make jokes about the Irish because it's so ridiculous. Um, some of the things that they even contradict themselves in their own articles, you know, which is it's amusing, it's not journalism, it's like, you know, the Americans have the National Enquirer, it's that type of journalism, it's not journalism. And as I say, it's it's actually like a little, it's a little standing joke now, like, what they're saying today, you know, like, what's what's the what's the chat today? It's funny, like, they, they do think it's funny, and it's, so it, it's eased me off to the, to, to the point that they really don't care. They, they really need to suck it up, because where they can 
where they can write about whatever it is that they write about all this crazy, you know, um, just crazy stuff. It's just absolutely insane. They want to continue to write that. They're going to have to, at some point, acknowledge the fact that, as I say, whether they like it or not, people like Bob Arum, the Prince of Bahrain, you know, all the Frank, Eddie, you know, all these big fights will, will happen because of Daniel Kinahan, right? So that's fact. The other pack's part is fiction. So I don't know if it's the Irish mentality, but at some point, would you not be proud that someone from inner city Dublin is actually sitting at the table with that level of organisation, like the Prince of Bahrain or Bob Arum, Eddie Hearn, and making history making fights, something that MTK is not within the organisation even got the qualifications to pull something like that off. You know, they, he is in amongst all of that. Now, for Ireland, would you not be proud of that? So that's a clip from an interview that Sandra Vaughan, the CEO of MTK Global, has uh, given to essentially their own channel, uh, asking why Irish people aren't proud of the fact that Daniel Kinahan is involved in negotiating the biggest fights on the planet. I'm delighted to say Nicola Talent, the investigations editor of The Sunday World, is with us. Um, Nicola, this is a story that has kind of gathered pace over the last 10 days or so. Certainly the specifics of Daniel Kinahan's involvement at the very top level of the biggest fights in the boxing world. And essentially it's all come from Bob Arum. This hasn't kind of really come from the, the Kinahan camp just yet. Um, it has come from Bob Arum, who is a, a world-renowned um, heavyweight in terms of boxing promotion all the way back for five or six decades at this stage. I, I, I've got to say I was a bit surprised that Bob Arum was so open about the fact that Daniel Kinnan has been involved at such a high level. Did it, did it surprise you who've been covering the story for such a long time? Well, I could actually kind of see the drip feed coming over the past couple of months because... Um, um, some some boxers that would would know Daniel Kinahan, and all of which are signed to MTK, which is the big boxing promotions company based out in Dubai, that Kinahan actually founded himself, and and then we were told stepped away from completely, but they had started to sing up Kinahan and say that he was brilliant and he was great, and he had posed for a photograph with a boxer called Darren Till, and that was the first photograph that we have seen, up-to-date photograph we've seen of Kinahan since he moved to Dubai from Spain. Um, so there was something coming. You could you could see that uh, they were starting to push him forward a bit again and, you know, to to, to tell us all what a what a wonderful fella he was. So, uh, of course, look, of course, I was surprised when, when it was Bob Arum that sort of revealed his, his full involvement with that high-end boxing Um he he basically called him the captain and said that he was the the guy their guy in the Middle East who was going to set up the biggest fight in boxing history. So it's an extraordinary situation. There's no doubt about it. And then obviously Sandra Vaughan um, did an interview on IFL TV, which um, has an MTK logo at the start of it. So she she runs MTK Global, and this is a, a YouTube channel with hundreds of thousands of subscribers. So obviously. This video has been is going to be watched quite a bit, and part of what she was saying there, obviously, is that we should all be proud as Irish people of the fact that um, Daniel Kinnan is involved in negotiating the biggest fight of all time. But she was essentially answering stories that have appeared in the Irish media that, that were written off the back of Bob Arum saying that Daniel Kinnan was involved, mm -hmm. because they're trying to to say that he's not involved with MTK. But in that interview, she goes on to say that he does advise the fighters as a private individual and that she, as the CEO, sometimes will, will take his uh, business advice as well, but that he has no connection mm. with the organisation. Yeah, look, I, I'll bring you back as far as, as 2013, when, when this all started, really. And at that point, in, in, in 2010, three years previously, there had been a huge multi-agency um, assault on the Kinahan organisation in Spain by Spanish police, UK police, Irish police were involved. Um, there was people arrested in Belgium. We were told at the time in 2010 that it was the end of the Kinahan organised crime group. Uh, Christy Kinahan and the two sons, Daniel and Christopher Jr., were brought in before the courts. Spanish system has a peculiar way of operating. The courts investigate it and, you know, it can go on. A case can go on for three or four years. 
Now, they were eventually bailed and let out. And at the time, I was working in the Sunday World there at the time, and we were kind of getting a little bit of information that they were back in business in Spain and very much so back in business. Um, and we went out to have a look. And while there, discovered that they were building a gym in an underground car park. Um, Daniel Kinahan was the guy dealing with the builders and Matthew Macklin's name was above it. Um, so this thing opened, it was called MGM at the time. It was a build as a kind of a, a you know, a, a, a gym for boxers from all over the world. Celebrity boxers went out, all sorts of people went out to train for a couple of weeks. Kinahan slowly stepped forward into the limelight of it. They started organising white collar boxing events, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, and the company grew and grew. In 2016, that company MGM came back to uh, host the Clash of the Clans, which was the boxing bout uh, that was to be their sort of homecoming here in, in Ireland. And um, it was during that weigh-in that the shootout happened that kicked off the Hutch Kinahan feud. Uh, MGM then changed hands, not changed hands, changed names. Sorry, there was a challenge by MGM in, in Vegas and they changed to MTK. And around 2017, uh, we were told that it had been sold, that Daniel Kinahan had moved away completely from it and that a businesswoman called Sandra Vaughan had bought it over. She'd bought it, bought out Kinahan and Macklin. Um, then she did a video giving out about the Irish media because the Irish media wouldn't stop saying that Kinahan was still involved. So she put out an, a, a video saying he certainly wasn't involved. He had absolutely nothing to do with it. She was completely independent. She was running the business now. And she actually issued a ban on Irish media for a year. She wouldn't allow any of the boxers to be interviewed by Irish media. She said she wasn't going to sign up any more boxers here in Ireland because basically the media were just an irritant that they kept bringing up the fact that Daniel Kinahan had been involved. Now, around end of that year, Kinahan moved out to Dubai. Uh, his his gym had been raided uh, and there was a number of court cases going on in, in Spain at the time, including the, the one into the murder of Gary Hutch. And MTK also moved premises then. It shut up uh, its headquarters, at least in, in, in Spain, although the gym remains there. And it moved its its finances out to Dubai, where, where Vaughan is based and where the company is based. It has gone from strength to strength since. It has signed 100 boxers. And she is at the forefront of it constantly and always insisting that Daniel Kinnan has nothing to do with it. So this situation this week is a little bit of an about turn on that. I think she's now saying that she speaks to Daniel. He's a friend of hers for 20 years and he advises her in business. He introduces MTK as a company to some big boxers, including, and she named Tyson Fury as one of those that Daniel Kinnan had introduced them to. She said, Kinnan takes no financial gain. There's no contract. It's all just on a friendly basis. Um, and that's that's where we're at with, with MTK and, and Daniel. The... Um, the concept of sports washing is something that is is uh, being much debated at the moment in sports media, in particular, because Saudi Arabia are essentially through a, a, um, a, a, a arm's length, but not not a short arm, uh, a Tyrannosaurus Rex mm. arm, uh, about to buy Newcastle. And Saudi Arabia is obviously the country that um, hosted one of the last big heavyweight fights and is the putative venue for the the massive the mega fight between um, uh, Tyson Fury. Uh, that, that's expected to happen between yeah. um, the, the two heavyweight champions of the world at the moment. And um, I'm wondering, is there also an element of sports washing that might be possible for somebody who has a reputation like Daniel Kinnan has to become involved, put on something like this and take the attendant publicity? Like you've got Bob Arum telling America mm. that I'm doing business with this person. America doesn't really care who Daniel Kinnan is. They, they, they really don't. The American media are not going to spend a lot of time when, when the Joshua Fury fight happens, there might be a few paragraphs in one piece or there might be one piece in one of the papers. But the rest of the media, the, the big corporations who put that TV show on, will show, here's Daniel Kinahan, the promoter of the fight, or you know, one of the advisors who put this fight together. And that's the story that will essentially be told about him. I think America might sit up and take notice if they think that there's a, an avalanche of US dollars heading into the Gulf. Um, and that's really what it's looking like, isn't it, for the pay-per-view? 
and that the you know between the politics of Trump and the problem with oil and everything else, um, there is a possibility that Daniel Kinahan has has stepped into territory that he hasn't really quite looked underfoot at. Um, you know, if 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 the the as far as the investigation into the drug cartel is concerned. I know that there have been a number of meetings between police forces in Europe and our own and with the DEA, who are very feared, the Drugs Enforcement Agency. They're the the crowd that took down El Chapo Guzman um, and many before him. They go into South America, into those Mexican cartels, and they literally pluck the dawn out and they bring them before the courts in the States. When things become political, the DEA really move, and you know there's there's a lot left in this in this yet. Um, I don't know what is going to happen in the coming months. I don't know is is the Gulf only interesting now because of COVID? Is it somewhere that that boxing can can be put on? Um, boxing is not my area of expertise, but I have found myself more and more drawn into it through my work as a crime journalist. It appears that it's a sport that has just become increasingly engulfed in in this sort of criminality, and and maybe you know, maybe there's no way back for it. I don't know. Um, I know certainly a lot of the amateur organisations here uh, would feel very strongly about not having people like that involved in the sport. You know, it's it's a place where. Surely working class kids can find something, can find a way off the streets. It's traditionally been a sport that has been centred on those kind of communities. And it maybe speaks a language to, to some working class kids that other sports don't. So, you know, it's it's sad to see the sport being engulfed with this kind of a level of organised crime, you know. Yeah, Nicola, I know you're, you're obviously working on, on a lot of stuff and I'm very grateful for the time you've given us. Is, that last question, though, is, is the reputation, is there is there some way that there's like, this is about reshaping a global reputation for this individual as, as somebody who is, you know, Bob Arum is like, he's telling America this guy's great. That's like, it's hard to buy that kind of imprimatur, you know? I agree, but I mean, look, in the end of the day, what ha- what is happening here other than it's money is speaking, isn't it? Money can buy anything, and um, I think what Sandra Vaughan in her in her latest outburst about uh, Kinahan and how wonderful he is, she reminded us all here in Ireland that we should stand up and be proud of him. Look what he's done, you know. Look what he's made this this working class boy. I mean, as if he's made it from nothing, you know, as if he's made it to where he is to the the abject luxury of his lifestyle in Dubai just by hard graft you know I don't I don't think that's that's the case at all I, and and I, I don't think anybody would believe that but in a way it shows a little bit of um you know a, a lack of association with reality that somebody could say something like that yeah I think a lot of people are going to certainly be paying a lot more attention in the aftermath of, of all this stuff uh, Nicola thanks so much for for being so good with your time. And uh, we'll talk to you again real soon. Cheers. Cheers.